of the lighter one. And I'm going to see how they finish up. Because it's going to be different than I do it. <laughs> In 1961, Bill Reynolds, who was a Forest Service packer, <coughs> showed me how we do this the same way on both sides. <coughs> when I was a kid and raised, we did it just like this. <coughs> but Bill Reynolds, why, uh, we had a, a, just a rope on each side and we met in the middle and come back and tied them off. That way, you can go back to either side of your mule and undo the pack. Because either, either this way, you've got to come to Cooper's side of the mule to start taking it off. Well, yeah, just, just like you've had it here. Only just... Yeah, and then go over and meet him in the middle. And now, Steve? Well, I like to give lessons. Especially if these guys have been packing as much as Steve has. Uh, here's the way I get rid of rope on this side. When I go to take it off, I just pull that down. And, uh, and the final tie there is supposed to be a half hitch and a half, and then a half. Any way you want to say it. Here's the way I do it. Damn, I, I like giving you lessons. <laughs> but just go, go a half hitch and a tuck. And it holds. I'm always in a hurry. The important lesson in that, though, is we all do it differently. Yes. And, and the only time it really matters is if Jim is here doing it. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. Because it makes a difference if you're working for Jim. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. But what I would stress, in whatever way you learn to do it, be consistent with doing it that way. If you pack very much, you're going to be in the dark. It's going to be raining. It's going to be snowing. You should be able to walk up there and grab a rope and know what it's going to do. And you, you don't want to end up with a hard knock. You want things to come loose. Every time you make a tie when you're cargoing or loading, you got to think about how you're going to take it off, how you're going to take it apart. And uh, I don't believe in cutting ropes. But anyway, okay. Steve's going to... He's got a set of panniers here in the top pack, and he's going to show you how we, how we use those. Yeah, I'd love to have questions. or you get on and you go a quarter of a mile and look okay. back, you'll know whether it's right or not. Yeah. It might be under the belly. But, you know, you want to have them somewhere near right. You know, when you cargo, you should have them somewhere near close. I got no objections to somebody using a pair of scales. You know, so they know what they weigh. And then when you put them on, generally they're heavier than these. <coughs> You put one on, and then if you got somebody just to balance that while you put the other one on. I generally put the heavier one on last. 
we used to, in a hunting camp, I had a couple of guys working with me, and we'd have two strings, and we'd get everything cargoed, and then I'd get in the middle, and I'd hand a pack over to one of the guys, and then I'd hand one over to the other side, and then I'd load my side on this one, and load the other one, and then go on back. And we, no time at all, we'd have them loaded, but I had to be the one that judged the weight of the pack. And then when I'd hand it over to him, he'd just tie it on there. I had to know with my pack whether to put mine a little higher or a little lower. Eighty years of practice doesn't hurt. <laughs> and I mean eighty years. When I was five years old, I had a string of saddles on the damn fence in front of the yard. I didn't play with cars. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it kind of gets to where Florida comes natural to you. And, you know, Shane likes to shoe, and it shows when he's doing it. I like to pack, and uh, I've done a little of it. <laughs> but, uh, some people thought it takes a lot of hard work. Hardest work I did was shoeing. <laughs> Okay. I've done that, but the damn rope wears out. So I just do it this way and let wear the pack saddle out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> And I noticed Steve also has cheated one other way. See, he's got hooks on those things, which is a real nice idea. <clears throat> now, I had, a, I had a set of panniers at uh, one of my hunting camps. I, we were about a half a mile from the airstrip. <clears throat> well, I found out if I had a set of panniers, I could hang them on a mule or a horse or something and just send anybody to the airstrip and say, put something in both sides, and they could get back to camp with it. <laughs> and uh, and then later, the last camp I had, I had a generator there, and so I packed gas. We'd take and put five ga two five-gallon cans on each side, and it uh, worked real good. Most of you probably would be better off using these rather than cargoing, but uh, I like the cargo. Well, Steve's got a pretty, pretty good system here as far as, uh, you know, to me a top pack was always a nasty word. I just didn't want a top pack. It was kind of like tying the pack down to the cinch. I just didn't like to do that. Well, I'm a retired Forest Service packer, so and I've pulled 15 head all the time. And so I had a heavy freight packing so all everything back here was all done each and yeah. Well it was timber, table, explosives, I don't care, whatever it was. My front mule here always carried my personal tent. And I just found it easier over time to get a good set of panniers like this for the top pack that had my tent in. You had everything everything for his camp right there that way. Now that's one thing about cargoing. This happened to me so many times I can't count them, but <clears throat> you get halfway to where you're going and it clouds up and somebody says, oh, my rain gear's in the pack. Yeah, which one? <laughs> well, I think it's the one with the blue duffel bag. Yeah, great. <laughs> so you stop and you uncargo three and find his damn rain gear. <laughs> and with a top pack like this, you have a big flat one on each pack, you just unzip the zipper, there's your rain gear, yeah. or there's your high line or whatever, so you can take care of your animals right away, and they're out of the way, and then you go and take care of all the rest of that dunnage. Now it's, uh, you know, there's good things and things I don't care so much for. 
when using these and, and doing it my way. Uh, if anybody would like to, have you got a, that done? Well, no, there's some little D-ring turn of quarters. These are for tying around your, your alforcas or your panniers or whatever. Yeah. You can even cook them like this. You know? so but if anybody have it secured. If anybody like to practice car going, you got a couple of real easy things here to car go if you want to. And I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> If not, why, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> I could tell a few more stories, but it wouldn't have a whole lot to do with it today. <laughs> oh, hey, whoa, you want to tie a diamond on that? Well, I saw that. You know, when I, the mother of my kids was raised over in Hell's Canyon on the Oregon side. They packed with a diamond. You damn well better know I learned how to tie a diamond when I met her. But I don't use it. I haven't tied two diamonds in the last 30 years. And besides that, Darlene says, well, you're tying them, but you're tying them backwards. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but anyway. But it's been 15 years since I last did one. Do you want to try it? <laughs> it, it'll be amusing. Okay, put your top back back on. Let's put one of these on so we got. Okay. Looks uh, to me like you need a sharp knife if you had a rack. That's... Well, you know, I can do this so much quicker, and I think better. <laughs> anyway, I got a life cinch over here. We need another man. Larry, have you got another man? Probably, probably somebody will say this rope isn't long enough or is it, something. But is, is it 60 feet? No. <laughs> I don't know how long it is, really. But it's the only one I got. I don't want it to be more than a roll of foam or something like that. 